All right, what's up, savages? Animation savages, welcome to uh, Adobe Animate. So, uh, Adobe Animate, some of you may know, used to be known as Flash, but Flash is no longer supported, unfortunately. So, uh, they renamed it to Animate, and now if you want to put up something on our website, you would have to use the um, HTML5 code instead of the old action script that, uh, that they used to use. But uh, Adobe Animate uses vector based software. Vector based software basically means that you can scale something down or up, and you will not lose the quality of it. This is a bitmap graphic, so if I scale it up, you lose some quality on it. See, now it looks a little bit pixelated, a little fuzzy, but if that were a vector graphic, that will not happen. We'll retain the uh, original quality that went up or down. It uses uh, mathematical formulas when you're working with vector based uh, graphics or software. All right, Adobe Animate, formerly known as Flash. Uh, was also used to create that TV show Bob's Burgers, Peppa Pig, Family Guy, and Arthur on PBS. I don't know if you guys see any of those shows, but I'm familiar with all four. All right, so let's get started with Adobe Animate. So when you first launch Adobe, you can greet it with this right here. It's a splash page. And these right here, these are the presets. These are character animation presets. So right now it's HD 1280 by 720. There's a resolution there. And it's there as well. Frame rate. Let's see uh, how fast uh, frames are displayed every second. Right now, it's 30 frames per second. Uh, platform type, does Action Script 3.0. I want to make something for a web for our website. I'll go to HTML5 Canvas. Want to make something for your computer, desktop, for an Android device, or an iPhone. You would use these other ones down here. Uh, Action Script 3.0 is okay for now. We'll leave these as is. But just to get familiar with them, I can go over here to social. And you can see the presets change. For Facebook, you want to put something on Facebook, you want something square, you change the size of it there. You want something vertical, changes the size of it as well, uh, there as well. In stream photo for Twitter, there it is, Twitty Twitty. Uh, YouTube, so, so YouTube right here, HD, 4HD, 4K. And Instagram, I don't see Instagram anywhere in there, but Instagram is square. So that should work right there for Instagram. So if uh, you're familiar with Instagram, every picture there's perfect square, so it's a one by one uh, ratio there. So that would work for Instagram. For games, here's some other ones here. Mobile games, here's for an iPhone 5, iPhone 4. And these, uh, these all have different resolutions. Ooh, big iPad. Educational purposes, something educational on your device, mobile device, computer screen. For advertisements, you wanna add somewhere on top of a website, a banner on top of a website, you can use these as well. And you can use the other ones to optimize them for mobile. Uh, these are also for web. Advanced, I'm not too familiar with these over here. It's action script. So uh, usually I just stay with character animation, HD right here. That's the one I'm fine with, HD quality. That's cool. 30 frames per second, that's all right. Uh, over here, uh, this is home. This is home selected. If I click on learn, I can get these little mini tutorials here. I can check them out and get familiar with the different tools in Adobe. Let me click back on home. There you go, back to normal there. If I go to open recent files, I can open up, uh, sorry, if I go to open, I can open up other projects that I was working on. Recent files, so today we're gonna make an eye monster. Actually, in the next video, we're gonna make an eye monster. Uh, and that's a video, that's a file that I saved earlier. And these are just sample files. I can click on one of these, play around with them, and see how they were made. Well, if you're new, you might get confused or feel overwhelmed if you open one of these. Like, what's that? What's going on? But they're there. I would say these a little bit more um, after some experience. Not necessarily the intermediate level, but if you're more experienced with Adobe Animate, I would say you can play around with these down here. All right, so I'm leaving this as is. So this is a resolution of my stage, of my frame. And the frame speed, Action Script 3.0 is okay. So I'm just going to click on Create and let it load. It's a big application, so sometimes it takes a while to load. So the first thing you see, see here is a big white square. I'm zoomed in at 100%, let me zoom out. So I'm gonna go up here, click there, I'm gonna go down to 50%, there we go. So this white square here, this is a stage. So if I animate something, what the viewer sees is gonna be right inside the white square. The area in the back, that's the, um, that's the workspace, behind the scenes, out of the frame. I can have something hiding over here and then bring it back into my scene here. The white square is what the uh, final product uh, will display what the final, final product will be. Up here, like all computer software, upper left hand corner, you have file, edit, all these other little tools in the top header there. 
if your uh, layout doesn't look like mine, if your workspace does not look like mine, go up here in the upper right hand corner. There should be a word up there. If it doesn't look like mine, it's not going to be classic. It's going to be something else. Click on that word, and yours might be one of these right here. Might be essentials. That's a common one. I don't like essentials. I like classic. I like the classic view. So switch it over to classic. And then I think this makes it a lot easier to, to learn Adobe Animate because it puts all the tools on the left, just like all the other uh, software from Adobe. Adobe also makes Photoshop and Illustrator. And they also put the tools on the left in Adobe and, uh, photos, and Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. They also have the tools on the left. And so if I, as I was mentioning just now, here are all the tools on my left side. They're actually cut up into like different brackets. So you can see here there's a bracket there. These are my selection tools. And then you got these here for creating. And you got some extra ones here. Here's a bone if you want to create an armature for rigging, uh, fill in the whole thing. Here's some other like navigation type of tools, color tools, snapping tools, things like that. All right, and up here, this panel here, the section in the top center is a timeline, timeline panel. And you can use layers in uh, Adobe Animate as well. I have one layer here. For those familiar with layers, maybe you've uh, used uh, Illustrator or Photoshop. I can click on this page here, and it's a new layer. So now I have a page on top of another page. So let me show you an example here. I can go here to layer one. I'll draw a circle there. I'm going to go to layer two. I'll draw a square over there. And this square is actually on top of that one. I can hide this eyeball there. So you can see the square disappears there. And here's the eyeball for layer one, and the square disappears there. If I don't want to accidentally mess up one of these layers, if I'm done with it, I can click on the dot below the lock here, and I can lock it out. I can also create folders to organize them, and I can also just delete them as well. Trash can, buy. See? And that's where it disappeared. Over here are the frames. So a frame is like a page in a flipbook animation, or just like a frame in film, like in the old school uh, film reels. And you can see here's a key frame there in that one. If you see a frame with the filled in uh, black circle, that means there's a key frame there. Here's a frame speed again, uh, the FPS, frames per second, it's 30. That's what it said. So from the beginning, I can change it here. I can preset or bring it down. 24 frames per second is a common one. 23 uh, as well. So let's go back to 30 as it was there. Oh, I can just click in there and type in 30 as well. What I was doing, I was holding my mouse in there and just dragging over to the left and right, change it back to zero. Oh, sorry, not zero, it's not gonna work, 30. There we go. All right, and then this button here, I can hold it and drag it, and it'll just kind of like zoom into the frames to make them appear bigger. Or really small. And you might've noticed this uh, change in size as well. I can just navigate through the frames as well. All right, and then over here on my uh, scene panel, I got the stage. I can zoom in and out of my objects here. It's 200%. If I spin the wheel, it's not going to zoom in or out. It's just going to pan up and down. You can see this one going up and down here. That's just like spinning the mouse cursor on my mouse. If I hold on shift and spin the wheel, then it'll do left and right. So something like this happens, you kind of get lost. Click on this uh, target site right here, and it'll center it. There we go, bam. I'm just go back to 50. I can tap it in there as well. I can select that as well. Over here is a properties panel. Depending on when it's selected, uh, it'll display something different here. So right now it's displaying the uh, the properties for the stage here. It's either a stage right there. I can change the color of the of the stage. You got a green stage, purple stage, blue stage. And you can play around there. And we'll just leave it as is. And it looks like now it's selected the uh, rectangle tool. And you go over here to selection tool here. Click on selection. And I'm going to click on this circle here. There you go. And then these are the properties for that shape right there. Gives me the size of it right there. Sorry, that's the location of it, the position. Here's the size. Fill and stroke. Fill. That's the color of the inside. And right now, that sh this shape actually has two parts. It has a circle on the inside and the ring on the outside. It's only giving me information for the part on the inside. So I'm going to double click it. There we go. So now i got the outline, that, per that perimeter, that border outside of it. Now that's also highlighted. So now it's giving me information for both. And there's a color there for the perimeter there. The stroke, that would be this. That's the outline right there. I can increase this here. Hold down the left mouse button and drag it over, make it thicker. 
and do that. I can also change the size of the stroke and click in here and go with the dotted one. Oh, it's too thick. Let's see. Uh, I guess we'll go back to this one. Uh, this one's a common one with right here. You can change the style of it. But because it's a circle, it won't be too noticeable. We'd have to uh actually works better if you draw something. You can see there it changes this uh the colors of it. All right. If you want to create a shape, you can just select it from over here, click on it, hold down the left mouse button and drag across. There you go. Then if you want to do something with the shape, you gotta select it. So we go to the selection tool. If you click on your shape one time, depending on where you click it, you're only going to select the uh, part of it. So right now I selected the inside. If I want to select the border, I got to select the border there. So you already got that one border there. And that, uh, that checkered, that little uh, polka dot eye, uh, color letting me know that it's selected. If I double click it in the center, it'll select the inside and the outside. Then I can go over here and change the color of it. There we go. If I want to change the size of it, let me double click it, select the whole thing. I can also do a drag select. And just be careful if you do a big drag select, you might select part of something else. See, I got that too. I'm going to drag select that one. And I'm going to go over here to transform. Now I have these, uh, these little brackets here. I can hold down the one on the, uh, on the corner. Hold it down and pull. And I can change the size of it up and down, left and right. If I want to proportionally scale it. Keep the height width ratio, hold down shift. And that'll do it there. There we go. I can also hover over one of the corners until my mouse cursor gets a little loop, and then I can use it to loop it around. Okay. If I want to move it, I can use any selection tool as long as the whole thing is selected. Hold down the left mouse button and just drag it over. If I hold down the alternate key and then left click it and drag, you create a copy. Okay, there we go. After you hold it down and then hold down the left mouse button and drag it and hit alternate key, then it leaves a copy there. And then it depends which one you let go first. I'm going to let go alternate first, and then the mouse, and it didn't make a copy. So hold on, the alternate for, alternate key first, A, A L T next to space bar. Hold down the uh, object here, let go of the mouse, and then let go of alternate. Then I get a copy. So you got to be careful on the release there. Also, when uh, you drag something over, you can hold on shift. Give you a little bit of more control over it. As you can see, you get these guides there. So you can try to line it up. Let me uh, hold on shift. They're more likely to come up and start snapping around. So yeah, I can try to line up the height there. See so if I get that line up there. And back to 50, zoomed out, and center the stage. And there you go. That's just some basic uh, tool usage and the panel overview of, um, of anime. Well, let me show you one more thing. Let me move this one over here halfway. And like I mentioned earlier, you're only going to see what's inside of the white stage, the white square right here. So that's going to get cut off. So to get a preview of the final product, that's control enter. And there we go. See, it's a preview right here. There's a little window, preview window. And as you can see there, that square is cut off. So the uh, the viewer, the whoever's uh, viewing this will not be able to see the rest of that because it's behind the stage. I can also just completely hide the square, the circle there outside of the frame, outside of the stage. Now I'll control enter again, get a preview. And oh, I got part of it somehow. Let's see, put it over there. Control enter. And there we go. And I didn't get it there. So thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. If you like the video, please feel free to subscribe, like, share, leave a comment, hit the notification bell. Anything helps. Have an awesome day.